Maybe. <laughs>
Good morning. I'm Council Member I. Danique Miller, and I'm Chair of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. I want to thank you for joining us today for a vote on 2252A. This is a bill sponsored by Speaker Corey Johnson that would require a labor peace agreement for city human service contractors. A labor peace agreement in arrangement is an arrangement between labor union and an employer in which both sides agree to waive certain rights for under federal law requiring <coughs> regarding union organizing and related to and any related activity. LPAs or labor uh, peace agreements frequently allow em employees to unionize and without interference from employer and also generally allow employers to operate without fear of work stoppage or boycotts. Often state, local, and go governments will pass local ordinances to ensure LPAs as a condition of doing business. In other words, the government entities will require those doing business at a government location or those government entities will require those businesses conducting business with government while also receiving financial assistance from it to sign LPAs in order to continue doing business with the government. During the committee's hearing on this bill this past May, we've heard from a number of advocates and stakeholders about the potential impacts of the bill on human service sector. Intro 2252 would make LPAs mandatory for human service contractors that have contracts with the city no later than 90 days following the award or the renewal of the city's human service contract, the applicant for the contract would be required to submit an attestation ensuring that the applicant has entered into a labor agreement with the rele relevant labor union. Each year, the city service contractor would submit an updated version of the certification identifying any changes from the original version. The city comptroller would be responsible for monitoring, investigating, and ordering compliance by all contracting parties with the law. In addition, the comptroller would conduct an annual report to the mayor and the city council analyzing the implementation and enforcement of such section of the law. I'd like to thank my staff, Ali Rasulnajad, John Wani, and the great Joe Goldblum, uh, certainly council staff, Newsat, Thomas, and Nevin. We've been joined by council members Denowitz, Rosenthal, Moya, and Adams. Okay. Does any, anyone wish to, yep. does anyone wish to speak on uh, Intro 2252. Council Member Rosenthal. Thank you very much. Um, Council Member Miller, you've, you're an amazing leader. You're an amazing union leader. You've taught me so much about the power of union. And in many ways, uh, uh, you, you are a big part of why I'm voting yes on this bill. Um, I support workers in the human services sector. They are predominantly women and women of color. Many are single moms raising a family on one income. For the past eight years, many of us have worked with the sector to get government to fund the providers enough money to pay their workers a decent wage provide full benefits and a pension, and pay enough overhead for the programs to function. Let me tell you, it's been an uphill battle. Government has gotten away with underpaying this sector for their work 
since they began as a mission-driven nonprofit born from faith-based institutions. It's been a great ride for government. Cuomo is lauded for requiring a minimum wage of $15 an hour. I support that, we all support that, we're all very excited. But New York State contracts in the human services sector were never increased to pay those workers $15 an hour. Never increased. So the man who made the mandate happen never funded the nonprofits that government is <laughs> contracts with to do the work to pay those workers $15 an hour, putting the nonprofits in an untenable situation. Similarly, our own Mayor de Blasio is lauded for free UPK. I too am delighted and excited. I remember being at several victory rallies. But city government underfunds the contract for nonprofits who uh, contract with the city to provide UPK. And so those nonprofits cannot afford to pay the same wages that teachers who are represented by the UFT and get higher wages, the nonprofits pay those UPK teachers considerably less money because the contract does not include money to pay the nonprofit teachers as much as those who are working in uh, our schools, our public schools. So for that reason, there is high turnover in the nonprofits that provide universal pre-K. Of course there is. Those teachers know they can get paid more if they work for a city public school. And who is it that loses our children? Because they don't have one teacher all year long. They have several teachers all year long. The truth is, government itself is responsible for having left these roughly 250,000 contracted employees in poverty. Today we're passing legislation that basically says we have lost the battle to get government to pay good wages with good benefits to the human services sector. Let's try a different approach and build on the strength and wins of unionized labor, which has successfully negotiated for higher wages for their municipal workers to bring those wages up for those in the nonprofit sector. After my eight years fighting with government to do the right thing by their contracted nonprofits, I'm ready to bring in the power of the union. But there do remain questions raised by this legislation that must be addressed. One, there is no money attached with this bill. So if unions are able to negotiate to get better wages and benefits for their members, who pays for it? The nonprofit literally is capped and doesn't have the money to pay. And they will be put in the unfortunate situation of looking like the bad guy. Secondly, if two nonprofits provide the services and only one of the nonprofits is unionized and manages to get raises for those workers somehow, we could talk about ways, but somehow, it means that two nonprofits, possibly working, I know in my district, we're right across the park from another nonprofit that does the exact same work. So if one of the nonprofits, let's say on the east side, gets unionized, gets more money for their workers, 
and finds a way to pay those workers, what do you think is going to happen with the workers on my side of the park, on the Upper West Side, where they're not unionized and they're getting the same shabby wages that the contract, the government contract, allows them to pay? These are serious issues which must be resolved. And I've spoken with many people who have agreed to address those issues, and I, I look forward to that work. Thank you very much, Councilmember Miller, for giving me a chance to explain my vote. Thank you so much, uh, Councilmember Rosenthal. Any other members of the committee like to speak? I want to thank you for, for your ongoing advocacy over the past seven and a half years on behalf of human service workers. You've been unrelentless uh, in, in doing so. Um, you have been their voice, but um, for, for seven and a half years on this committee, we had submitted that the best way to support workers is through the right to organize and the right to supporting collective bargaining. Um, what we have seen is uh, individual uh, workers not having the um, resources and the ability to negotiate and comp fair compensation on their behalf. And so, um, again, the tenets of the organized labor movement is the right to organize and the right to collective bargaining, and we support that. And I would just also say that unions and employers aren't always adversaries. Sometimes they work collaboratively to ensure that they're supporting the services that are being delivered, and equally as important, those that are delivering the services. And so I, I, I look forward to that. I, I, I know that you and I will both be paying attention to this, um, but this is a great day for, for human service workers here in the city of New York. So um, with that, William? <clears throat> Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on civil service and labor. Proposed introduction 2252A, Chair Miller. I vote aye. Rosenthal. With reservations, I vote aye. Adams. Aye. Moya. I vote aye. Dinowitz. Aye. I voted five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. Uh, okay. okay. With that, this hearing is adjourned. It's, it's, it's as simple as that, um, and it, it just
whatever was done, I, I don't believe that we would have gotten here, aside from the and demolishing the buildings that are there now and the buildings that are there that are still there, all the masonry's and so on is. That's really something to be proud of. Um, but I, I think that the real basic foundation <laughs> is that it's simply Good, good job. <laughs> that was crazy for you. And that's kind of an extra thing we have to do. Yeah. Uh, how, how many years ago was that first one? Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, we did it. Yeah. 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 Here's the thing, there were only four companies in the city that fell into the bill to begin with. So it really doesn't impact anybody else, right? South Bronx, South Brooklyn, uh, North Brooklyn, and Southeast Queens, right? Those were the, the, the four communities that were responsible for 80% of the dollars. They didn't make it, so we managed it, right? And so, so it only could be one of those four. Goals, no bill, it's a new some of that surveillance. Is Correct. That what you're Correct. Okay. Yeah. It, the, the, the bill actually says all, 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 all the majority or all of it will be moved by the. But it inc oh, so one thing else to do that it, it increases the amount of garbage that could be transported. Yes, it goes back to where it was before okay, so prior to. So because I've been getting, you know, you got the email too. Yeah. Thanks for that. It, it, so it increases the amount of garbage, so it doesn't undo the no. gains that were made. No, 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 absolutely not, because first of all, the gains that were made are woefully insufficient, right? The trucks are still there and stuff like that. But ultimately, when this is up, it's going to be... What's up, Queen? That it, it, okay, that it, it, it's going to be moved by rail, right? So we do the math for 100%. Like even if it, so the bill says most or all, that's anywhere from 51% to 100%. And 